in tears because Cap doesn't know the names of the scouts and or coaches who will attend the workout? If Tom Landry's corpse is in Atlanta, that beats the random guy who sees Cap at 24-hour fitness during his alleged five-day-a-week, 5 a.m. workouts. Oh, but Cap only was given two hours to agree to the workout. How long does a jobless man need to decide whether to show up at a job interview? Cap needs to do three things to ace this workout. One, avoid wearing a Fidel Castro t-shirt or any other polarizing clothing. Two, run a 40-yard dash in 4-7 or better. Three, say he will stand for the national anthem. Do those three things, and the Bengals or the Falcons will hire Baltimore offensive coordinator Greg Roman in the offseason, and Cap will be competing for his starting job in Cincinnati or Atlanta next season. Which of the three tasks is most important? I'd say the 40-yard dash. If Cap can't run, he has no value in the NFL. All right, welcome back. Whitlock and LeVar Arrington. Bucky Brooks is back. We're joined now by Fox Sports analyst Rick Buecher. Time now for Darnell's question of the day. Darnell, take it away. Yes, sir. Let's move to Colin Kaepernick, who, as we all know, had a very busy weekend. Kaepernick was supposed to have an NFL workout that 25 teams were expected to attend. But then he changed the venue at the last minute, put on his own workout for the media that only eight teams showed up to. Cap actually showed up wearing a Kuta Kente t-shirt and afterwards had a message for the NFL. Take a listen. I've been ready for three years. I've been denied for three years. We all know why I came out here, showed it today in front of everybody. We have nothing to hide. So we're waiting for the 32 owners, the 32 teams, Roger Goodell, all of them to stop running. Stop running from the truth. Stop running from the people. We're out here, we're ready to play. We're ready to go anywhere. My agent, Jeff Nally, is ready to talk to any team. I interview with any team at any time. I've been ready, I'm staying ready, and I'll continue to be ready. Now, Cap obviously thinks he's ready, but do you guys <laughs> think he's serious about playing football? No, not at all. I, I don't, I've said this for three years that uh, ever since he started this, this was his way of quitting football. Uh, the game's too hard for him. He's not built for it. And he, he's just not built for it. And, you know, I think he proved it this weekend when you run away from a job interview, 25 teams sent real people to go scout him, and he ran. He's talking about Roger Goodell running. He ran. Wow. I, I do believe he is serious about playing. I just think that his interpretation of reality may be a tad bit off. Um, when you look at the, the operation of how his, his workout went, and you're, you're a former scout, Bucky. We scout talent. Um, that's our thing. You, you mentioned the whole checklist. Kunta Kente shirt was a fail because it wasn't a Castro. It was a Kunta Kente shirt. Y'all look up who Kunta Kente is. Two, he didn't run a 40, so that's, I guess that's a fail. Three, there was no flag involved. But I talked to a source close to, to this situation and sat in the meetings on organizing this workout. Everything that he wanted, the NFL agreed to. The only, one, of, one of the main points uh, that they wanted and stuck, they stuck to their guns with was them running the, running the, the, the practice, workout, the yeah. workout, all right? Now, he goes and he runs this practice and this workout, but you tell me, all he did was do a warm-up. That was not a workout. You want to know what a workout is? Let me tell you what a workout is. Uh, multiple receivers running routes. That's a workout. No simulated pass rushers were involved. You want to see if he can move. get the ball out and move when the pass rush is coming. No timing for the release of the ball. No play action fakes. We didn't get to see his footwork. No rollouts. No read progressions. All of these things were going to take place if he worked out at the Falcons facility. All the things that you want to see take place if I'm a scout and I'm going to hire you, one ball, it's great. It went viral, the whole world saw it. You throw a ball, it was deep, it was nice, it was a dime. That does not mean you are ready to go play in the National Football League. There are a lot of other elements that you have to show other than that, that polarizing moment of him throwing a deep ball. That's great, and that plays a part. But that does not mean you've solidified that you're ready over here to go out and play in the NFL. No, I haven't run these kind of workouts for years as a scout, not necessarily for pros, but for college guys. Uh, the one thing that you want to see from guys is you want to see them treat the workout like a job interview. Uh, when I was a young kid, my dad used to tell me, look, when you go for an interview, humble and hungry. 
Presentation matters. Now, in the regular workplace, get a haircut, come in a suit, look like you're ready for the part. I know at a pro workout, you definitely don't show up in a Kunta Kente T-shirt wanting someone to give you a job. Like that right there ended it for me. And I've been one of his biggest supporters in terms of, look, he deserves to have an opportunity to play in the league because he's better than some of the guys that are backing up. However, when you show up like that, looking like you're ready to box, you're ready to have verbal sparring with owners, why would any owners see to bring you in? Look, the National Football League is a privilege. It's not a right. You have to do whatever is necessary to have your opportunity to get in. He didn't do that. So now I can't imagine a team bringing him in and saying, we want to deal with the Colin Kaepernick experiment. Darnell, what's up? This used to be a fun segment. Uh, what? <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing not here? Not today. Not today, Rick. Look, <laughs> this, this workout, this workout was a platform for him to say what he said afterward without calling a press conference. That's why he couldn't do it on the NFL's terms, because there wasn't going to be any press mm -hmm. there. So he wasn't going to have to uh, have the opportunity to say what he wanted to say, which was essentially, you blackballed me for three years. Now go sign me now. Kneel, kneel to me and mm -hmm. sign me and show how wrong you were. As if the NFL is going to say, you know what, you're right, our bad. Come on back. What have we been thinking? You're right. I, you're right in that his understanding of reality is he's delusional in terms of if he really wants to play. And that's why I just don't believe that he wants to play. I believe that, that, that it's, it's something else. Because if it's all about playing, and I don't believe, to be honest, I don't believe either side wanted this to happen. If the NFL wants it to have happen, then you give it a little more of a run up. You make it an honest effort and you give him the opportunity to be in his best light. They didn't do that. And then he obviously wasn't interested in, in well, trying to combat that. Rick, I, I'm going to, and I'm always defending the NFL, but keep, I know for a fact, behind the scenes, Kaepernick's people, something should happen, something should happen. He's ready, he's ready. He, he, you know, anytime, any place, I'll show, and it, okay, anytime, any place? Okay, meet us Saturday in Atlanta. We'll have 25 people there. We'll have a facility. But they called his bluff, and he folded because he doesn't really want to play football, and he doesn't like resistance. And so you're right, he did all this so he could take 90 seconds to, to utter a statement. No resistance. He doesn't want to play seven on seven. He doesn't want anybody asking him a follow-up question. He does, he's not built for this. He's not, I'm sorry, I'm going to hurt some people. He's not man enough for this. He needs to work through his issues before he's ready to step into a real man's world, because I'm just sorry. You don't get to dictate to a group of billionaires, millionaires, thousandaires, how they give you a job. Mm. You don't get to call that shot. And so quarterback is the ultimate trust position. The organization partners with you, the head coach, offensive coordinator partner with you. Trust is the essential element. And he basically held a press conference, I don't trust nobody. <laughs> That's what, I don't trust the NFL, I don't trust nobody. If I can't have my own camera crew, who wants to partner? With? That's like getting married to somebody that says, I don't trust you. Damn it, you, I can need a GPS device on you wherever you go because I don't trust you. Now let's get married. But we, yeah. didn't, we didn't need a workout for that. Like, we, th there needed to be conversations, not mm -hmm. a workout. And, and on both sides of it, to me, that's what made this grandstanding as opposed to really trying to get something done to find, find an avenue in which Colin could actually play in the league again. Well, back to the reality aspect of it and, and what that looks like for, for Kaepernick. If, if you're going to have that statement at the end of, of the, the workout and you're thanking the people who are there, you thank them, they've been attacked for three years, you made a very clear point that the people that were standing in front of you, you were thanking them. You didn't thank any of the, the people who got on airplanes uh, from the, the, the 25 teams that decided to come watch you on a Saturday that was just for you. You didn't thank the supporters or the people who were behind the scenes trying to make sure that this could be a smooth uh, opportunity for Kaepernick. None, none of those people were thanked in that moment. So to look at what he saw as reality, these people are supporting me. They knew that that was where the workout was going to be. It was already predetermined that he was going to work out there. All right. When you say we're moving the workout 
and you don't give the people who are going to run the workout even enough time, travel time, right? Mm -hmm. You let them know an hour before, and it was an hour and 20 minutes away, all right? You do the math. You do the math. You did not want to have to go through what it was that you were going to go through. If you ran, if you went out there and you did the exercises exactly the way the NFL were going to do it, you ran a 4-5, 4 6 40. You ran the routes, and the routes were crisp. You were, you were going through your read progressions. If this was made more about football, then we can sit there and we can say, in reality, some of the things that Kaepernick saw and thought may have been on, may have been on point. But because it was just a toss the football around moment in time with a, a very I've forceful made all the statement, passes that he completed. It, I literally it's, have. It's, it, you and can know. make some of them now. And the people running around thinking like he proved anything as a football player on Saturday don't know a damn thing about football. Coming up, Speak for Yourself gets even more fearless. Kaepernick and Eric Reed's black identity crisis has fueled the Cap Life Matter movement for three years. It's never been about social justice.